Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about what's on my mind in the world of boxing on September the 12th, 2012. First, it's my understanding that Bob Arum and Steve Wynn are discussing the possibility of having a fight card at the Wynn Casino in Las Vegas and that fight card would have Orlando Salido versus Mikey Garcia. Garcia unbeaten. And the second half of that card would be unbeaten. Vanis Martirosian against once beaten, allegedly, Eris Landy Lara. Right? Now let me just say, <clears throat> I think this is a win-win, so to speak, if they can pull it off. If I were the win, and uh, understand that win Las Vegas is really top shelf, right? It's a premium casino. Emphasis on the word premium, right? If I were the win, I would realize that this is exactly the kind of quality fight card that I want at my establishment. Both of these fights are excellent fights. My own take on them, I think Orlando Salido is too advanced for Mikey Garcia. I think he wins that one, although Garcia, unbeaten fighter, trained by Robert Garcia, one of the sports elite trainers, would certainly come to fight. And of course, I've made a video where I've predicted that Vanis Martirosian simply will have too much volume for counterpuncher Eris Landy Lara, right? Who I would straddle by KO. But let's just say these are both A plus fights. And uh, since the win is an A plus venue, let's hope that. Bob Arum and Steve Wynn can work it out. Also, keep in mind, Steve Wynn already has been involved with some of the biggest fights in boxing history. Um, so let's hope that Steve Wynn is brought back into the game so we can get another great venue in Las Vegas and, of course, more quality fights. If it sounds like I have an agenda, I do. I don't work for top rank or win. But, you know... I'm a boxing fan, and I want to see great fights, and I want to see them in great venues. Let's hope that card happens. Okay, it is just days away from Sergio Martinez against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. They apparently have both arrived in Las Vegas. If you've been following the weights, right, you'll see that both guys, not just Chavez Jr., but both guys were well above the 160-pound middleweight limit recently, right? Both guys are carrying around extra pounds. And that's something to keep an eye on. But let me just say this, and people, you already know that I believe Sergio Martinez wins this fight. Let me just reveal a personal bias, and it is a personal bias. I just don't believe, deep down, that a non-stop pressure fighter can succeed at the highest level, right? I believe we're finding this out with a host of guys, right? Giovanni Segura losing to Brian Valoria, Marcus Maidana losing to Devin Alexander, Magnamed Abdusalamov getting knocked down <clears throat> before prevailing against older Jamil McCline. Right at the top level, you know, if your game is to just come forward with nonstop pressure, sooner or later you're going to find a guy who is going to literally have you walking into counters, right? Who's literally going to time you because he or she is going to know exactly where you are and they're going to set up a construct where. You're just walking into flush punches. History has had successful pressure fighters. Mike Tyson, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. But I would argue that those guys brought with them wrinkles that I don't see with many of the fighters today. Mike Tyson in particular, you know, had a lot of head movement, had a high guard, would literally move, would bounce, and then would pass.
counts on the inside, right? Yes, he was coming forward, but if you look at the videotapes, uh, you're going to see he wasn't coming forward as much as you remember, right? And of course, as he came forward, he had defense, he was guarded, he was actually ready, right? But even Tyson, understand, when you're in the sweet spot of just being a pressure fighter able to wear out opponents, your time in the sun is short-lived because you're living off of reflexes, agility, the kind of things only the young have, right? So take a look at Ricky Hatton's career and you're going to see, you know, by the time Ricky Hatton gets knocked out by Manny Pacquiao, Ricky Hatton had already been exposed by Floyd Mayweather and Ricky Hatton had already had very tough fights, the Costa Zoo fight. Right, So I think what's going to happen here is uh, Chavez Jr. is going to find out that he's fighting against a fighter who is a different level. Right, I think he's going to have a very hard time finding Sergio Martinez, landing anything on Sergio Martinez, who I believe is a different fighter than he was 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, when he lost to... Antonio Margarito, another pressure fighter who, of course, as he got older, started showing cracks in his foundation, right? Chin gone against Shane Mosley, eye problems against Manny Pacquiao, then, of course, the eye puffs up again against Miguel Cotto, right? When you're a pressure fighter, in my opinion, your window of opportunity is short, and you're going to and up against guys who, quite frankly, know how to get you to do what they want you to do. Let me also say this, too. Chavez Jr. throws predominantly hooks. He's really a mid-range hooker, right? Um, Sergio Martinez is very accurate. Look at his CompuBox numbers and throws a very straight left hook. I believe, excuse me, very straight left. I believe Martinez's straight left is going to be the story of this fight. I know Chavez Jr. believes that he has one of the best chins in boxing. Understand that before Sergio Martinez fought Sergio Zinzurek, Zinzurek hadn't been down. In that fight, he was down several times. If you look at Martinez's record, you're going to see that he's actually a slugger. His straight left is a big punch, right? Matthew Macklin was in front of Felix Sturm, harassing him for 12 full rounds. He didn't make it 12 against Sergio Martinez, right? He got hit. He got hit hard. He went down multiple times. Don't be surprised if Sergio Martinez is able to badly hurt. In fact, don't be surprised if he drops and stops Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. So I'm hesitant to say Martinez by decision when I believe that Martinez could well get the KO. The bet I'm recommended in that is Martinez to win the fight straddled against Chavez Jr. by KO. I believe Chavez Jr. only has a puncher's chance. He does not have the volume to match Sergio Martinez, right? He got badly outthrown by Sebastian Zvik. Andy Lee is a southpaw like Sergio Martinez. That's the only similarity between the two. Don't overplay the Chavez-Andy Lee fight because Andy Lee is there to be hit, right? Andy Lee was a guy having all kind of problems with Craig McEwen before the end of that fight. Right? Sergio Martinez is not there to get hit. He's going to be low. He's going to be turned side profile. Right? You throw a left hook, he'll be able to duck under it. You throw a right, he's looking at the right the whole way. You try to go to his body, he's bent at the waist. The kind of fighter who would give Martinez a hard time is someone like a Kelly Pavlik, who did. Right, Pavlik went the distance against Martinez. Right, a guy who can keep Martinez busy with a jab as the fight is going on. 
Chavez Jr. doesn't even have a jab against a southpaw opponent. I like Martinez in that one straddled against Chavez Jr. by KO. Let's talk about some other fights that matter this weekend. Canelo. Jose Cito Lopez. I'll just put it to you simply. I know the weights show that Lopez has been weighing as much as Canelo of late. Right? One of boxing's secrets, and it's not really a secret, is that punching power matters. Right? I understand Canelo has looked bad in fights. I believe the worst I've seen him look was against Miguel Cotto's brother. Canelo looked like he was on the verge of getting taken out. Right? I'm not here to say that Canelo is that hard to hit or, you know, completely overwhelms me or has completely overwhelmed me in every fight. But what I am here to say is that Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. I don't care what Jose Cito Lopez has weighed of late. The bottom line is Jose Cito Lopez doesn't have anything remotely close to Canelo's punching power. If they were pitchers, Canelo throws 100 miles an hour. Jose Cito Lopez's fastball is about 90 miles an hour. There's a gap. If these guys get into a shootout and trade punches, I would expect Canelo's punch to do more damage, right? I see a stoppage in this fight. I think Canelo blows out Jose Cito Lopez. Um, Jose Cito Lopez's best moments should come very early before Canelo acclimates to him. But understand, Canelo has a pretty good jab. You can't just bum rush Canelo. He has a pretty good jab. And I believe he has less wasted movement than Victor Ortiz. Right? So I think Canelo is going to force Jose Cito Lopez to respect his jab just like Jesse Vargas did when he fought Jose Cito Lopez. Then I believe Canelo is going to start to land bombs. Let me just say this. As I watched the Canelo Shane Mosley fight, I was amazed that Shane Mosley was able to stay upright in that match. Right? I don't expect Jose Cito Lopez to be as lucky. I'm expecting a stoppage. We'll find out. I like Canelo in that one. Okay, let's let's talk about Leo Santa Cruz versus Eric Morrell. You know, Santa Cruz really impresses me. In fact, let me sound crazy. I have a hard time seeing Santa Cruz losing to anybody over the next three years because he's in that sweet spot, right? He's young, he's fluid, he's able to throw incredibly high volume. That's how you beat a counterpuncher. Right? In my opinion, this is just my opinion, why did Floyd Mayweather not fight Antonio Margarito and Margarito was in his prime and setting CompuBox records? It's because counterpunchers know that they cannot handle excessive volume. Right? They can be overwhelmed. Right? Um... And so uh, all I can say is Eric Morrell is in his mid-30s. I believe that Leo Santa Cruz's volume is just going to be too much for Eric Morrell. Let me point out that Morrell, in my opinion, had problems with Maris's volume, Abner Maris's volume. I suspect he's going to have even more problems with Santa Cruz's volume. Santa Cruz, in my opinion, and I know he's young and relatively unknown, he's on the verge of being a pound-for-pound pound fighter, right? The kid is really on the verge. He's an excellent fighter. He's hard to hit. He throws a lot of punches. He's not sloppy or reckless. I'm expecting him to win a pretty one-sided win over Eric Morrell, who is shrewd, right? Who has been a champion. But I just think that he's overmatched. Okay, let's, let's talk about a fight that really fascinates me quite a bit. Daniel Ponce de Leon against Johnny Gonzalez. Now, if you are an Adrian Broner skeptic, right, you believe that that Ponce de Leon fight against Broner, who's still unbeaten, 
is the blueprint on how to give Broner problems. Right? Let me just tell you the copy box numbers. If I told you that one of those two fighters, Ponce de Leon and Broner, threw 141 more punches over 10 rounds, that's 14.1 a round, more than the other fighter, who do you think that would be? And believe it or not, the answer is Ponce de Leon. He out threw Adrian Broner. And I'll give him credit. Against Broner, he actually got off 200 jabs. He only landed eight. But he was committed to that jab for all 10 rounds. For those doing the math, that's 20 jab attempts a round. Right? You look at these numbers and you see that Ponce de Leon actually has some volume on him. Right? Here's the problem. You know, in my opinion, Johnny Gonzalez, and I understand he's not as well known, in my opinion, as his talent is, but Johnny Gonzalez is like Chad Dawson. I'm really impressed with Johnny Gonzalez's boxing ability. He also has a big KO percentage, right? He is your prototypical boxer puncher. In many ways, he's like Nonito Denier, right? Now, his problem is in taking big punches. The Nishioka, the Nishioka fight, uh, the Vasquez fight. These are fights he was doing well in, and then he got dropped in, right? But I believe that Gonzalez is just too skilled a boxer for Ponce de Leon to outbox him. So the bet I'm recommending, and obviously both of these guys, huge punchers, right? Ponce de Leon may have outthrown Adrian Broner, but his real calling card is stopping you by KO, right? The bet I'm recommending here is Johnny Gonzalez, in part because of great footwork, great foot speed. I like Johnny Gonzalez to win the fight, straddled against Ponce de Leon by KO, right? I think Johnny Gonzalez should be able to outmaneuver Ponce de Leon to build up a lead. He might even be able to stop Ponce de Leon late. But given the chin problems he's had, just like Chad Dawson, you have to hedge the play with Ponce de Leon by KO. Let's talk about another fight. This weekend's loaded. Marcus Maidana versus Soto Carras. I like this fight. It's juicy. What I need for you to do is to double check me on the weight. If this fight is not fought at a weight limit of 147 pounds, then you need to disregard this video. Right? I like Marcus Maidana in this fight. In fact, I think somebody is going to hit the canvas in this fight. Right? I like Maidana hedged against Soto Carras by KO, but I do expect Marcos Maidana to win the fight. Let's talk about it. First weight. Soto Carras, who is 29-30-ish, in his last three fights, has fought above 147. I'm a skeptic when I see a guy, literally around that age, lose weight to fight an opponent who's comfortable at the new weight, right? You recently saw it with Chad Dawson, losing weight to fight Andre Ward, right? I believe Soto Carras is going to have a hard time making 147. I don't believe he's going to be as good as he would be if this fight were at 154 pounds, right? Now, let me also say, too, style-wise, the fight's a problem for Soto Carras. Marcus Maidana has a problem with movers, Devin Alexander, Amir Khan, or tight jabbers, Andre Kotelnik, right? Whether or not you believe Kotelnik won that fight, he was certainly giving Marcus Maidana problems, right? Here, he's fighting neither. Soto Karras is the proverbial tough guy in boxing. He's there trading punches with you. Heads are going to come together. People are going to get cut. Many times at Soto Carras, there's going to be bleeding and all this other stuff. 
but he's really there to mix it up with you. You don't have to go far to find him in a fight. This is the opposite of Sergio Martinez, where if I'm fighting Martinez, I have to find him in the ring, right? Um, here, Soto Carras is going to be knocking on my door, right? So Soto Carras will be there to get hit. And again, you know my theme in this video, punching power matters, right? Marcus Maidana wasn't really able to touch <clears throat> Devin Alexander when they fought. He had a hard time landing flush on Eric Morales, right? Don't forget about Marcus Maidana's punching power. It's severe. He's one of the harder hitters in the sport. Against a fighter like Soto Carras, who's there to mix it up, I believe Marcus Maidana's punching power rules the day, right? I like Marcus Maidana to win that fight. Um, the way I would bet it would be Maidana by KO, Soto Carras by KO. Understand, though, you're taking a risk because it's only a 10-round fight. Let me know what you think. Oh, let me just add one addendum, too. You know, rumors all over the internet, and that's what it is at this point, rumor, that 50 Cent may have had a falling out, or at least a strain, a straining of the relationship with Floyd Mayweather, right? Now, whether these grown men have a beef, not my issue, right? None of my business. Where it does get to be my business is on the impact going forward of who is going to promote any future Floyd Mayweather fights. You know, it might be Golden Boy. Not TMT promotions, right? And that has consequences because TMT has an impressive stable of fighters right now. And the question is exactly whether those fighters are going to be on the same card as a Floyd Mayweather fight or whether... Mayweather is going to be on a card dominated by Golden Boy promotion fighters, right? And so that's something you want to think about because, of course, TMT now has fighters like Yorkies Gamboa, Celestino Caballero, right? And, um, you know, just see what happens as things go forward, right? Keep in mind, too, Mayweather contractually is his own man. He's a free agent. If he wanted to, he could fight on a top rank card, right? Against Manny Pacquiao with the undercard being a lot of top rank people, right? So uh, Mayweather is really, you know, with all due respect to Freddie Roach's gym, Mayweather's the wild card in the sport. And if he's not tethered to TMT, that opens the door to Mayweather being on different cards and a whole lot of other possibilities. So that's a story you definitely want to watch, not for the salacious details of, oh, what's the beef about, but really more in terms of what does it mean going forward for boxing. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.